Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. COVID cases dropping to the lowest in nearly a year. We have the latest numbers here at home and across the country. And taking a live look outside with live cam. Good morning. It's Saturday. Can't wait to hear what's going to go on today. All right, six there, six o'clock this morning. I'm losing it. Starting off on a little <laughs> flustered <laughs> note. 73 <laughs> degrees out there. Hot and humid. Alicia oh, Pereira. We can feel it. <laughs> it is. We need a fan in here. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And yeah, I mean, well, Sarah Spivey. The temperature inside the studio might be my fault because I walked in and it was way too cold for me. And so I. <gasps> Sarah. 800 <laughs> degrees in here. Oh, Sorry God. about that. I will turn it down. But it is very very toasty outside right now, at least for a morning standard. It's 73 degrees out there, very muggy. You can feel the humidity. 74 in Pleasanton, 73 in New Braunfels, and 73 in Gonzales. Look at this counterclockwise swirl of a low pressure system bringing some very early morning showers to Gonzales, Quero, Victoria, Hallettsville. A few flashes of lightning here near Hallettsville uh, earlier, but that heavier rain right in the north end there of Lavaca County. Uh, you go a little bit more to the north and you can see along I-35 we're starting to see some good shower activity near Austin. Here in San Antonio we're going to have the chance for some scattered rain not only today but also tomorrow. Now it's not going to be a washout. There are going to be times where we'll have no rain uh, in the area but when it does rain it'll be tropical in nature with big fat heavy drops uh, and tropical rain in nature is is not usually severe, so we're not worried about severe weather this weekend. It's just going to be a good weekend to have that umbrella handy. Think about if you visited Florida and how it rains every day. That's kind of the way it's going to be this weekend for us, but still salvageable when it comes to time outdoors. So I'll be back with a look at that future cast coming up soon. And happening today, the family of baby James Chitis will be hosting a service in honor of the child this morning. The family says the service is happening from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. at the Castle Ridge Mortuary. That's 8808 West Military Drive. Two Bear County Sheriff's deputies fired after one of them ordering the assault of an inmate. Sheriff Javier Salazar says video and audio showing 34-year-old Deputy Frank Ramos ordering the attack on a 45-year-old inmate and... This all happened after a cat call for a woman deputy on Monday. Now, Ramos facing charges of official oppression and assault bodily injury. Sheriff Salazar says the part-time deputy, 22-year-old Jasmine Ramos, also fired for failing to stop or report the attack. She is not facing any criminal charges. Now to the latest on the pandemic here at home. Metro Health officials reporting only 61 new cases in Bear County. They also report that two more people have died from the virus since the last checkup. There are 153 patients in our local hospitals with 49 in the ICU and 30 on ventilators. More than 690,000 people in Bear County are now fully vaccinated. And taking a macro approach, new COVID cases across the country dropping to their lowest levels in nearly a year. But there's still an urgent need to get more Americans vaccinated. ABC's Christine Sloan has the details. More progress against COVID-19, the average number of new cases plunging to less than 28,000, thanks largely to vaccinations. As more and more people roll up their sleeves and get vaccinated, the number of cases and the level of community risk is decreasing. In San Francisco, the most vaccinated large city in the country, no new COVID patients at one of the city's biggest hospitals for the first time in over a year. It feels like a milestone. There are zero admissions at San Francisco General. New Jersey expected to lift indoor mask rules for vaccinated people by Memorial Day weekend and the push to increase vaccination continues. Oregon doing a lottery for people who get the shot. If we can get 20 to 40 percent more of the people in Oregon to choose to get vaccinated among the hesitant or the population today not prioritizing getting the vaccine, I think we could save many lives. But experts still worried about a potential future surge. The nation with a 45 percent plunge in vaccinations since early last month. Where there's less vaccination, the virus will emerge. 
15 states in Puerto Rico have vaccinated a third or less of their populations. And a sobering report from the World Health Organization saying the worldwide death toll from COVID-19 could be as much as two to three times higher than official counts. Almost three and a half million people have died from the disease, according to the organization's statistics. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, Minneapolis police say seven people in local hospitals after a shooting in downtown Minneapolis. Information is limited right now, but here's what we know so far. Minneapolis police tweeting that there is no active threat. Ten people, though, shot. Two people have died. One in critical condition. And like we said, seven people in the hospital right now with non-life-threatening injuries. We're going to be bringing you the latest throughout the morning as more details become available. And seven medical professionals are now charged with homicide over the death of soccer legend Diego Maradona. Maradona died from heart failure in November last year. Weeks before, he underwent surgery for a blood clot in the brain. Argentine prosecutors say Maradona's medical team, quote, violated the duties that each of them was in charge of, end quote. They will begin to testify on May 31st. If convicted, they could face up to 25 years in prison. And back in the United States, a federal judge allowing the Dakota Access Pipeline to continue operation during the Biden administration's environmental review. Yesterday, the judge concluded he did not have the authority to side with a request from the tribe to shut down the pipeline. Now, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe says the 1,200-mile pipeline endangers the Missouri River. The pipeline began flowing in 2017, carries oil through the Dakotas, Iowa, and Illinois. And an intern for former Representative Gabby Gifford is now running for her old seat in Congress. State Representative Daniel Hernandez announced his bid to represent Arizona's 2nd Congressional District as a Democrat. Hernandez was an intern when a man opened fire at a campaign event in 2011, killing six people and injuring 13, including Congressman, woman, Congresswoman, 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 Congresswoman Giffords. Hernandez stopped Giffords bleeding until paramedics arrived. Time now is 6.07, 74 degrees out. And are you thinking on buying a home? Well, it might not be the best time to get one. We know that for sure. The details on how home prices just smashed another all-time record high still ahead. We keep hearing it's a seller's market for that and used vehicles. All right, it is Saturday. Alicia, what does that mean? Oh, time for Texas Eats. We got Texas Eats and, of course, everyone's favorite meal. We have brunch. Yes. That's what's on the menu. Next stop. David Elder taking us inside a brewery for a delicious. Ooh, look at that. I don't even know what we're looking at, but it looks good. It looks good. We're looking at something good. And then over here, we're also looking at something good. Live cam. That's if you like uh, <laughs> heat and humidity. We're going to be back with more with Sarah's forecast. I'm never here for this. I always hear about it, so I'm excited to see it up close. And oh, no, it's amazing. It's one of the favorite segments. Obviously, we have all the graphics. We have the excitement, and we are talking about the best meal. Not even subjective. Objectively, the best meal. We're talking brunch. David Elder okay. taking us inside a brewery, serving up a weekend brunch on the Riverwalk. Take a look. This one right here caught my attention. That's just a BLT, but just done up. We start with the house-made sourdough bread, toast it up with a little bit of our proprietary herb oil that we built, blend in house as well. Ooh. A couple of strips of bacon, some heirloom tomatoes, romaine lettuce, also some shaved Parmesan cheese in there. But what really makes it unique is the uh, the dressing. We do a, a roasted jalapeno Caesar here. Brings a little bit of heat, but just enough and a little bit of saltiness as well that complements that bacon. This looks wild. Mm. Oh, bro. Where's my elbow? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> if you want the sourdough that's made in house to do a little BLT, that sandwich is just killer. The bacon on the inside stands mm. out. Nice crisp edges on there. There's not too many bites that are better than when you get the acidity from the tomato, the fattiness from the bacon, the saltiness from the cheese, and then the toast on the outside. It just works. That crisp produce on there, that's a great bite, man. All right, there we go. What was it? It's wild? 
It's wild. <laughs> wild. I like how he breaks it all down with the acidity and then the fattiness of the bake. It looks really good. The question is, is it going to be a good day to eat brunch outside, Sarah Spivey? Well, there are going to be some downpours around probably about 11 a.m. through 2 p.m. That's the best time frame today for us to see rain in San Antonio. And we've already seen a couple of light showers out there early this morning. If you're an early riser this Saturday, you might see a little bit of a wet on the ground outside outside right now cloudy and 73 degrees east northeast winds at about 12 miles per hour it's 68 at Bernie Stage Airfield 72 in Bolverde 71 in Rio Medina 71 in Bandera a very warm start to a end of May day uh, we are usually see morning lows well into the 60s and so it's pretty sticky and muggy out there and we are seeing some rain on the radar just not necessarily right around San Antonio although as I mentioned we have seen some rain earlier uh, this morning. Let's go off to the east and you can see some good showers here out in parts of Gonzales County, Lavaca County, even a few flashes of lightning earlier. So just to the east of Gonzales, uh, right around Shiner, that's where we're getting a good heavy downpour at the moment. Max familiar with Shiner, of course, right, Max? All right, up to the north near San Marcos and, and Buda, we've got some showers too out near Austin. Now, this is all around an area of low pressure. I can put it in motion here, and you can actually see the low pressure system. And so throughout the rest of the morning, as this moves up to the north and to the west, we're going to see our rain chances increase in San Antonio with some daytime heating as well. So let me take you through the future cast. You can see that by about, as I mentioned, 11 a.m., through the early afternoon. Uh, some downpours are going to be in and around San Antonio. I can't rule out a few flashes of lightning, but what I can rule out, severe weather. We're not going to see severe weather today, uh, but some of this could be heavy at times and lead to ponding on the roadways, so just be careful. And again, even into the afternoon, our rain is going to be isolated. There are still going to be some showers in the afternoon and evening hours, but they're going to be more isolated in nature, only about a 30% chance for a shower storm in the afternoon. High temperatures are going to be limited around San Antonio today because of the added cloud cover and the chance for rain. A high of only near 80 degrees, 79 in curved. Meanwhile, warmer out to the west. Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Cruiser Springs, you just don't have as good of a chance to see rain as we do in San Antonio today. Your high temperatures will be in the low 90s. So again, today, 10 to noon, 40 to 60 percent chance for scattered showers and even a few rumbles of thunder. In the later afternoon and evening hours, becomes more isolated in nature, so you still should be able to enjoy some time outdoors. My advice, take the weather app with you because you can also see the radar. Uh, and so if you have outdoor plans, you'll want the radar and your umbrella handy. East winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now you can really see again that low pressure system originated in the Gulf and it's moving on shore right now. Uh, another thing that we've got going for us this weekend is a big upper level low pressure system across California, Nevada, Arizona. That's streaming in Pacific moisture and we're going to get sandwiched between these two low pressure systems both tomorrow and Monday. And that's why we continue to keep a chance for scattered downpours through Monday. Uh, here's a look at overnight tonight again only isolated in nature but then look at tomorrow we'll see a couple uh, more uh, heavier downpours around the midday hours and into the afternoon as well and then again on Monday now on Monday we have the potential to see just a line of showers develop and that will be pretty stagnant now it's where that line sets up that is a big question. This particular model has it right over San Antonio, but it could very well be east of us. But when all is said and done, additional rainfall through Monday of maximum up to an inch for those who do see rain, a maximum up to two inches of rain out further east toward Houston for those who see rain. Again, notice how I'm being pretty diplomatic about it for those who see rain because it is going to be scattered in nature today, tomorrow and Monday. Temperatures should be on the lower side because of the added rain and cloud cover. We will see our rain chances come to an end, though, by midweek, and we'll end the work week uh, with just toasty temps. All right, Sarah Spivey, I appreciate the, sh uh, the Shiner shout-out. Yeah. Say that ten times fast, because yesterday, or two days ago, gorgeous out there. Shout-out to the KSAT weather app. Let me know it was going to be a perfect day. <laughs> Hit the golf course. Had a couple Shiner shout-out, Raul and Roland. Paid for the Man, a lot of right. shout outs this morning. Matt. I mean, look, it's Saturday morning. <laughs> shout out Central. Can I get a shout out? Shout out Alicia for being here. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> 617, 73 degrees out. I just shouted you out on Twitter. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well. <laughs>
There you go, all, all you. All right, looking for something fun to do with the family this summer. The Fiesta Texas movie Drive-In is back. The details on when it will open still ahead. And Google venturing into a new territory, at least for Google. We'll explain next. Oh, my favorite lottery numbers. <laughs> Pick three, five, three, nine, fireball three. And then we have the daily four. The numbers are five, two, four, three, fireball eight. And then cash five. The numbers are seven, eight, 18, 32, 33. And Mega Million 6, 9, 17, 18, 48, big number 8, Mega Pyre 3. Good luck. We'll be right back. Welcome back. In your morning consumer news, U.S. home prices keep skyrocketing and now hitting record highs. That's right. The National Association of Realtors says in April, the median sale price for a home was a record $341,600. We like to be exact here. It was also reported that homes are selling in a record fast 17 days on average. So you put your home up for sale 17 days later, it is gone. In fact, 88% of the homes sold in April were on the market for less than a month. Many real estate companies expect the housing market to flatten as the year goes on, especially as more building supplies become available. That's right, and Amazon getting rid of its two-hour grocery delivery app. The company says the service will now be included into its main platform by the end of 2021. That way, customers can buy groceries and other items, track their orders, and contact customer, customer service from one site. And from one big tech story to another, while some businesses shutting their doors, unable to compete with online shopping, Google is doing quite the opposite, planning to open a store called, well, very original here, Google Store. That sounds really cool. The store <laughs> will have experts to help customers with tech issues, broken screens, and installations. And it will also sell Google products, including the Pixel phones, Nest products, and Fitbits. Google Store is expected to open this summer in New York. Hmm, very cool. I would go. Yeah. I like the Apple stores. Like oh yeah, stores. those are those are fun. The Google store would be kind of cool. There you go. 622, 73 degrees out. And the Fiesta Texas movie drive-in is back this summer. The details on when it's expected to open, that's next. All right, it's almost summertime. So if you're looking to do something fun with your family this summer, we have the perfect plan for you. That's right. So the Rooftop Cinema Club, now called the Drive-In at La Quintera, is coming back to San Antonio this summer. The Drive-In, located in the parking lot of Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, and you can start enjoying the movies early next month. Still no official date set yet. The tickets start going on sale online next Wednesday. More details will be released next week. All right. I'm excited to hear the details and the movies. Oh, yeah. It's being outside outdoors and driving movies like that is always fun. That's true. Time right. right now, 626, 73 degrees. Vaccination numbers down and a lot of states around the country are trying to ramp up the shot incentives. The next half hour, we're going to explain what some states are doing to try to get more people vaccinated. In today's great graduate segment, we're very excited to introduce you to a San Antonio ISD student who not only started his school's eSports varsity team, but he also is getting a scholarship for eSports. We'll explain in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 6.30 this morning, May 22nd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Thank you for starting your morning with us. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Very happy to see you here. All smiles today. Oh yes, always. And when I was running to the station today, <laughs> I noticed it was very hot, very humid. That's why the hair is pulled back. Sarah, Alicia, I don't know how you, look you do good, it. you look good, girl. Thank I, you. You look good. Yeah, your hair impressive. always looks amazing. Thanks. OK, well, let's get down to business and let's talk about what we can expect as far as uh, the weekend weather goes. We have got a low pressure system which originated in the Gulf of Mexico. It's come on shore and it's producing quite a few showers for our eastern counties. And later on today, it's going to bring some scattered downpours to San Antonio. In fact, we've already seen some light rain in San Antonio in the overnight hours from this system out in Gonzalez County and 
eastern Gonzales County, some good moderate rain just approaching I-10 there. And in northern Lavaca County, some moderate rain as well. North of Cuero and DeWitt County seeing some good moderate rain as well. Now around San Antonio, it is currently quiet, but a few light showers south of Bear County and Atascosa County near Pleasanton. A few light showers along I-10 in Kendall County as well. And as you can see, this is propagating the north and to the west. And as it does so, it's going to send around downpours here to us in San Antonio. It's scattered in nature, so not everybody is going to see rain, but when you do see rain, it will be heavy at times. The good thing is we're not concerned about severe weather, so that's some good news. 76 right now at Stinson, warm spot on the map. 71 in Rio Medina, 72 in Kerrville, 73 in Canyon Lake, and yeah, it's humid outside. So for your weekend forecast, I, I know this looks kind of daunting, right? 60% chance for scattered downpours today, 60% chance for scattered downpours tomorrow, but Imagine if you lived in Florida and you get a chance for rain every day, but you still enjoy the time outdoors. That's kind of going to be our weekend. Uh, we are going to have those scattered downpours in the forecast, and I'll walk you through the future cast to show you time frame about when we can expect to see that 60% chance throughout the day. Alicia? Thank you, Sarah. I knew this morning a family working to figure out what comes next after a fire at their home just south of downtown. It happened in the 300 block of Belden Avenue just after 3 a.m. Firefighters on the scene telling us the flames started in the back of the home just outside the bedroom. The fire made its way inside the room but was quickly put out. The home did sustain heavy smoke damage and we are told the homeowner was using a, gener a generator to get power to the home. The Red Cross was called to the scene to help the family out. The fire department is still investigating. Under the latest this morning, two guns found at two different schools within the same district. Northeast ISD confirming it happened Thursday and Friday. The first case Thursday at MacArthur High School. The district says a student was in a hallway alone acting suspicious. An administrator and an officer called the student into a classroom. The district says they discovered the student had a gun. He was later arrested. Now the district says the student explained he had the gun for his own protection for quote, things occurring outside of school. The other gun was found yesterday at the E.D. White Middle School. The district says a student happened to find the weapon inside one of the bathrooms after the school day was over. The student reported the gun to staff and it was secured. The district is reviewing video from outside the restroom to determine who left the weapon there. All right, we are still in election season. Early voting starts Monday in the runoff election to decide five San Antonio City Council races. The early voting period runs daily through June 1st, except for Sunday, May 30th, and Monday, May 31st for Memorial Day. Hours are 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on May 24th to the 28th and 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on May 29th and June 1st. You can find all this information. You can check out the voting locations. If you have any questions about the election, just head to ksat.com. And higher power bills. The CPS Energy Board is set to meet on Monday at 1 p.m. On the agenda is a presentation that includes reasons for a proposed rate increase. According to the agenda, pres uh, the agenda presentation, the consequence for not having a rate increase would jeopardize keeping up with technology, increased security and safety risk, declining customer service, as well as bigger bill increases in the future. The presentation says even before the pandemic and winter storm, the need for an increase was building. Customers, customers spoke, we spoke with customers and they say that increase comes at, of course, a very bad time for families already struggling. Summer, it's when we pay them all. No! Summer, because it's real hot and everything. Oh. Yeah. We have to pay like in two payments. Brace myself. We're going to have to do it. We have to do what we have to do. It is CPS is the monopoly here. Any rate increase would have to be approved by the board and council. The target is for the fall of 2021. Specifics on the provisional rate increase will be given in a meeting on Monday. The energy company declined to comment. Mayor Ron Nierenberg, who sits on the board, was not available for comment. All right, it's what we've been talking about throughout the morning. Donuts, dollars, and even dating app perks. Some states and businesses across the country, they're pulling out all the stops, doing everything they can to try to get more people vaccinated. The growing number of vaccination incentives come while in inoculation rates are falling and more states loosen pandemic restrictions. CNN's Reed Binion reports. The push to get COVID-19 vaccine shots in more arms is ramping up across the U.S. We are absolutely heading in the right direction. We just can't 
We can't take our foot off the accelerator. According to the CDC, more than 160 million people in the U.S. have at least one dose of a COVID-19 shot. But inoculation rates are falling. The average daily pace of vaccinations down nearly 50 percent since its peak last month. Businesses, state governments and the White House boosting incentives offered to Americans who get vaccinated. Free fries at some Shake Shacks, free donuts from Krispy Kreme, Ohio, New York, Maryland and now Oregon, all giving away away millions of dollars through special lotteries. How about a chance to win a million dollars? The White House teaming up with some of the most popular dating apps. Proof of vaccination can get you access to premium extras, including boosts, super likes and super swipes. People who display their vaccination status are 14 percent more likely to get a match. We have finally found the one thing that makes us all more attractive. A vaccination. Health experts say vaccines are key as states begin to relax pandemic restrictions. It's going to be important that we have that widespread, that widespread uptake of the vaccine. Then we can return to more and more of what we like to do. I'm Reed Binion reporting. And here at home, get ready for Fiesta. 900 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be available at a Fiesta-themed vaccine clinic. It is happening in the 2600 block. Uh, oh, 2600 Plaza building on Southwest Military Drive, 9 this morning till noon. And you're going to have the chance to even get free Fiesta medals and Fiesta giveaways while supplies last. No appointments are needed. All right. Never thought we'd be celebrating Fiesta like that. No, it's, uh, it's definitely unique. But hey, get a vaccine, you get a medal. 637, 73 degrees out. Still ahead, we have some sizzling ideas that will up your grill game. That just looks really good. Yeah. Oh, is that a pizza? Yes. All right. Okay, so here we go. The sport of competitive video games, or eSports, is only getting bigger and bigger. And in today's Great Graduate segment, we are introducing you to a local student who not only started his school's team, but he's getting a college scholarship because of his video gaming skills. What a world. I want to have those skills. <laughs> Taking a live look with live cam. It's a muggy morning already. We'll be back with more on your forecast. Welcome back. Well, we know San Antonio is a hotbed for scholarship athletes, and now eSports falls into that category. That's right. So this morning we are introducing you to Fernando Garcia, a Cast Tech student who not only started his school's eSports team, but he is also now the first eSports scholarship athlete for the Texas A&M system. This is a varsity letterman jacket, and this means the world to me. Uh, I ended up creating the eSports program here. Like so many people, Fernando Garcia grew up playing video games. It was just a casual hobby with some of his friends. When I first started playing uh, in eSports, I didn't believe that it was a sport, especially coming in from an athletic background, <laughs> doing Olympic style taekwondo, football, basketball, the whole uh, deal. But after playing in a grand final series of over five hours, playing all the maps possible for a best of five series, it was grueling. Fernando then started his mission of starting his school's own team. When I first started creating the program here, back when I was a freshman, I received a bunch of no's. A lot of teachers didn't really believe in the idea of esports and people wasting time playing video games, especially during classes. And like sports teams across the country, you need the right talent to win. I've recruited multiple players to come here to the high school and to get on multiple different teams, especially for Rainbow Six. I've had people come in from John Jay, from Burbank, and multiple other schools throughout San Antonio. As J Sport falls as well. And in well. some cases, esports, video games, are an incentive for students to get their work done, pass classes, and ultimately graduate. I've actually convinced some students that never had the idea of going to college afterwards, and they're attending the same university that as that I'm going to. So to see them not caring about school, to going to be playing for an esports team at the university level. It's crazy. If I miss that hard. There are people who think this not, is ridiculous. Would, Video games bad. as a sport? Uh, you need to go on the left yes. Side of the table. It's competitive. It's growing around the world. You can play it anywhere, anytime, against anyone. And the fact that video games is growing to that level to have millions of dollars to end up franchising is crazy. Now universities are popping up here and there to have esport programs themselves, offering scholarships, and same thing at the high school level. And it's crazy to see how many teams, there's thousands upon thousands of high schools competing in the high school esports league and multiple other leagues across the nation. And get this, Fernando told me he wants to either coach at the university level or at the high school level where he can make an impact on students' lives. And this blew my mind. He <laughs> says he was already too old 
to be a pro gamer. What? Because I asked him about it, and I was like, oh, you can make millions. He's like, no, I'm already past my prime. And I was like, you're like 17, 18 years old. How are you past your prime? Oh, my gosh, and we're ancient. Uh, I, uh, don't get me started. All right, <laughs> Sarah Spivey. Competitive gamers get past their prime quicker than NFL players. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, we are seeing some rain on the radar this morning. Around San Antonio, just a few sprinkles. But off to the uh, east, you can clearly see that there are some good rain showers out in near Gonzales County and in Cuero as well, seeing some good rain showers uh, out near Edna and Victoria. Can you see the counterclockwise swirl there of the low pressure system? Now, this one originated in the Gulf of Mexico, just a typical low pressure system producing some traffic tropical rain showers and even a few flashes of lightning earlier out near Hallettsville. This is generally moving to the north and to the west and as we get some daytime heating we'll see the counterclockwise motion even uh, greater because some showers will develop uh, out here as they are right now near Pleasanton and as they are along I-10 uh, toward Bernie just some very light rain showers and throughout the day today this is going to be the source of our scattered rain. Now uh, we are not expecting severe weather today and the key here for the rain today is scattered. So you still should be able to enjoy some time outdoors. Just bring a radar with you. Our KSAT Weather Authority app has a radar and bring your umbrella as well uh, because there are going to be some times here where we'll be able to, to uh, see breaks in rain as we are pretty much right now around San Antonio. But we have seen uh, some areas of light rain throughout the morning already. Looking at the future cast right around midday, I think that's a good chance for us to see here in San Antonio, some of those scattered downpours. So best chance today between 11 a.m. and about 2 p.m. Uh, you can see even at 3 p.m. a few uh, isolated to scattered showers and storms. Storms are possible. A few flashes of lightning are possible, but no severe weather today and no severe weather tomorrow as well. That's the nature of the rains. The way that we've liked to describe it is very tropical in nature. So think about going, maybe you've gone to Disney World before, you've been to Florida, a beach on along the Gulf Coast, Coast. You know that just about every day there's a chance for rain, uh, but it doesn't last all day long. And that's going to be today and tomorrow. There's going to be a chance for rain, especially as I mentioned, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Scattered showers, even a few rumbles of thunder possible, but it will not be raining for everybody all day long. In fact, even in the afternoon, only isolated later afternoon, isolated showers and storms possible into the evening. Temperatures are going to be on the cooler side just because of all the added cloud cover and rain chances we will only be at 80 degrees for the high and we'll have east winds today at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Outside right now, we are seeing a little bit of the sky here as the sun rises 73 degrees and today will be mostly cloudy. Muggy to start the day, 73 here in San Antonio, 75 in Del Rio, and 72 in Kerrville. But boy, is it humid outside. Soupy, juicy. The atmosphere is juicy. It's very tropical. And you can feel that humidity uh, out there. A wider view of the weather pattern, you can see very clearly that low pressure system that I was showing you on the radar. There it is. And we're going to be sandwiched between another upper level low, bringing in Pacific moisture. So we're going to have a lot of the ingredients for some heavy downpours today, tomorrow, and and on Monday, and I can actually take you through the future cast here. Tomorrow, another day, 60% chance for scattered downpours, especially during the middle of the day. And even into the afternoon, a few downpours are possible. And then again on Monday, scattered downpours are, are possible as well. So rain chances, just to break it down for you, 60% today and tomorrow, right around the midday hours. 40% on Monday and on Tuesday, but then we'll only see isolated rain on Wednesday and Thursday. Temperatures are going to be... Uh, limited to the 80s throughout the rest of the upcoming week uh, just because of the higher humidity that we have in the air. It's going to feel very, very warm and muggy outside. Even if you don't get the rain today, it's going to be humid outside. All right, Sarah. Spivey. Tropical. Tropical in nature. Got to hold get off on the car wash. Antonio. Oh, the get a pina colada, guys. There you go. Oh, yeah. 648, <laughs> 73 degrees out. Are you looking to up your grill game? Well, oh. next on GMSA, Marilyn Moritz has the perfect grill gadgets for Max Massey and everyone else who likes to grill. We got some ribs, we got some pizza, it's breakfast of champions, and we got a live look out at the roadways. Taking a look out there, there's I-35 at Alamo. Not too much going on, not too many people out and about, but if you are out and about, make sure to drive safe, be smart. We'll be right back.
upping your grill game, whether mm. gas, charcoal, or electric. If you're looking to take any grilling to the next level, well, we have some new tools that can help. That's right, 12 on your side. So Marilyn Moritz has a few sizzling ideas. From sweet s'mores to smoky ribs, some new grill gear can elevate your game. First up, pizza. One thing that trips people up when they're making pizza on the grill is that the bottom crust can burn before the cheese or the toppings have set. The kettle pizza oven has a big thick piece of steel that radiates heat downward and helps melt the cheese and set the toppings before the bottom crust can burn. It's $225 on Amazon. The kettle pizza oven has a built-in thermometer so you know when it's hot enough to make the pizza. If ribs are your thing, the Traeger rib rack fits eight racks on edge, where normally you'd fit three. So more ribs for you. It's $24. To help you remove those ribs, check out these $29 heat-resistant Jolly Green Barbecue Silicone Gloves. They provide excellent grip, but also protect your hands from the heat. These color-coded s'mores sticks can be used around a campfire or on your grill. They extend to keep the kiddos from getting too close to the flames. $18 on Amazon. If you want just the basics, Consumer Reports suggests this handy toolkit from Cuisinart. It includes a spatula, meat fork, kebab, and corn holders in an organized case. $30. Bucks. And if you're ready for a new grill, Consumer Reports testers say this is one of the best for your buck. The mid-sized Even Embers gas grill for $390. If you prefer charcoal, this 22-inch Weber continues to top Consumer Reports ratings. It's $165. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, $165 seems better than $400. Yeah, I'll stick to the s'mores, though. There you go. <laughs> the ribs <laughs> had me. <laughs> All but right. I'll smoke the... Oh, oh my God. 654, okay. 73 oh. degrees out. Now let's take a look at what's coming up next on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, subtropical storm Anna forming northeast of Bermuda one week before the official hurricane season begins, where storm watches are in effect this morning. Plus, the manhunt underway after a road rage incident in California left a six-year-old boy dead. Now the family is speaking out. And COVID cases dropping in the U.S. to levels we haven't seen in nearly a year. But the push to get Americans vaccinated continues as some hospitals admit younger patients. Dr. Anthony Fauci joins us live. It's all ahead here on GMA. And the news you need to know before you go, two men in the hospital this morning after a confrontation inside a local gentleman's club escalates to gunshots. So take a look. This was a scene around 1 a.m. the 2700 block of Northwest Loop 410. Police on the scene telling us three men causing a disturbance inside Sugar's Gentleman's Club. Security kicked them out of the club, and then the group got into an argument with security. Three men loaded up in their truck, tried to drive off. The security guard pulled out a weapon, fired several shots. Two of those men shot in the arm. The driver went to a local hotel to call for help. Both victims taken to University Hospital. Stable condition. Right now, police working to figure out what charges, if any charges, those involved will face. And also, before you go, a family just south of downtown working to figure out what comes next after a fire at their home just after 3 a.m. This was a situation earlier in the 300 block of Belden Avenue. Firefighters on the scene telling us the flames started in the back of the home just outside of the bedroom. The fire made its way inside the room, but it was quickly put out. The home sustained heavy smoke damage. We're told the homeowner was using a generator to get power to the home. The Red Cross was called to the scene to help the family out, and the fire department is still investigating. And this swirl of low pressure is going to be our source for scattered showers and even a few storms today. Right now, most of the rain is near Hallettsville, Gonzales, Flatonia area, and also in, in, into Guadalupe County. So, Seguin, you'll be getting some light rain here very shortly. And then here in San Antonio, throughout the rest of the morning, we'll see our rain chances gradually increase. Our best chance for rain today is going to be pretty much between 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., but even into the afternoon, we'll still carry a chance for an isolated shower or storm east winds today at 10 to 15 miles per hour again we're not worried about severe weather uh, this kind of tropical rain doesn't really produce uh, any kind of hail so we don't have to worry about that tomorrow once again 60 percent chance for scattered downpours and again on monday we're going to have scattered showers and even a few storms then by tuesday we'll see our rain chances become more isolated by the end of the work week we'll just end with humid and muggy weather so i'll continue to keep you updated have an updated look 
Market Radar coming up at 8. And you got to have the KSAT weather up. Yeah, oh, you wait. can see the radar for yourself on that weather app. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to take an hour-long break. We'll see you back here at 8 o'clock some rain around San Antonio and South Central Texas. Tropical low is moving on northwest, so a lot of rain right now for the Gonzales Hallettsville area. Uh, we're not going to be in San Antonio. We're not going to be on the heaviest side of this system. Rather, we're going to be getting the tail end of this, so pretty much right around the midday and to the early afternoon. This is when we have the best chance to see scattered downpours today. Uh, it won't rain everywhere. A high temperature of 80 degrees, more scattered rain. Good Saturday morning to you. We have got an area of low pressure, uh, which is right here just to the west of Gonzales, to the west of Cuero. You can see all of the heavy rains uh, that are occurring in those areas near Hallettsville as well. This system is going to move northwest and it's going to increase our rain chances here in San Antonio, really right along the midday hours. But even then, we are still getting some light rain out near Schertz and Seguin, just some sprinkles at the moment. And again, near Gonzales, some good rainfall there in that area and near Hallettsville as well. No lightning, no severe weather expected uh, today, but we could see a few lightning strikes again right around the midday hours. Uh, that's when our rain chances are best this Saturday here in San Antonio. It will not be raining all day long and even in the afternoon only isolated rain is possible. Tomorrow we'll do it again with a 60% chance for scattered downpours and then on Monday another chance for rain drying out by the end of the week. New York City today, a high temperature of only 80 degrees, but it comes at a cost and that cost are scattered downpours, uh, mainly during the midday hours. That's our best chance for scattered rain in San Antonio, although there are a few light rain showers out there right now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. An argument at a local gentleman's club overnight ends in gunfire. This morning, two people in the hospital with gunshot wounds, multiple people detained. We have the latest from police. Plus, double trouble for a Southside homeowner. What we know about the fire that sparked overnight and the man arrested at the scene. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City. I promise the cameras are working. Oh you can't see too much. 73 degrees to start your weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. But until then, good morning. 8 o'clock this Saturday, May 22nd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us and starting off with Lisa Rivera. Yes, I'm here. You're here. We're good, <laughs> good to morning. go. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Happy and humid Saturday, though. Hot and humid. That's My right. goodness. Sarah yeah. Spivey. That Outside with tra with uh, trans guide right now, I do want to bring something to your attention. Mm. This is 37 wow. at Southeast Military. You can see that there are a couple of vehicles there uh, that have lost control and are now on the side of the highway. The northbound lanes of 37 at Military traffic is pretty much um, completely stopped at the moment. Uh, I believe that that truck on your left hand side of your screen, the one that's deep in the grass there, is carrying uh, or some wood or something like that. So it could cause some debris on the roads as well. You can see there that the police officers are directing people onto the access roads uh, behind in the background there from the highway, probably to clean up some of that debris as well. So if you have plans to travel along 37, the northbound lanes at Southeast Military might be best for you to find an alternative route. At the same time, you can also see that the roads are a little damp, and that's because we do have uh, some showers out there right Right now, uh, this is a look at our, our system. I went ahead and put play on it and you can see very clearly an area of low pressure just near Gonzalez. See that low pressure system there? Uh, that is the source of our rain for the day today. Now we're not seeing a ton of widespread rain around San Antonio at the moment, really around San Antonio on the east side of town. It's just very light rainfall here uh, east of 281 to Elmendorf to shirt some uh, drizzle possible as well up to New Braunfels, but in Seguin, just north of Seguin, a heavier rain shower uh, right near the uh, 
Laubach area in Geronimo. So uh, be on the lookout for some moderate rain there there this morning. However, a wider view and what you'll notice is that areas like Hallettsville, Gonzales getting the heaviest of the rain right now. Now this low pressure system is going to move up to the north and to the west today. And so our best chance for more moderate rainfall is going to be in San Antonio from about 11 a.m. till about 1 p.m. And today it's not going to rain all day long, especially during the daytime. We're going to have uh, times where there will be a few downpours, but they'll be scattered, and that's the key word there. High temperature today of only 80 degrees because of the added cloud cover. Now, big thing to know about this weekend, as I mentioned, scattered downpours tropical in nature, so we're not concerned about severe weather. But I'll be back to show you the future cast for the rest of the day today, and of course, uh, tomorrow as we finish out the weekend. Alicia? Thank you, Sarah. And two men are in the hospital this morning after a confrontation inside a gentleman's club escalated to gunshots. This was a scene around 1 a.m. in the Sugars Gentleman's Club on Northwest Loop 410. Police on the scene tell us three men were causing a disturbance inside, so security kicked them out of the club. The then group, then the group started arguing, got into their truck and tried to drive off. That's when the security guard pulled his weapon and fired several shots. Two of the men were shot in the arm. The driver went to a local hotel to call for help. Both victims were taken to University Hospital in stable condition. Right now, police working to figure out what charges, if any, those involved will face. Well, arson investigators are working to figure out the cause of a fire overnight after both firefighters and police were called out to a home on the city's west side. So take a look. This was a scene. Crews out there telling us a small fire started in the front of a home in the 300 block of Via Rosa around 2.40 a.m. The fire spread to the living room. Firefighters able to put it out quickly, but at the same time, police had to respond to a disturbance between the family members in the front of the home. Police eventually arresting one of those family members. Charges still pending. As for the home, damage is not yet disclosed, but we do know they suffered heavy smoke damage. And CPS Energy customers should prepare for higher power bills. That's because there's talk of a provisional rate increase by the end of the year. Monday at 1 p.m., the company's board is expected to discuss reasons for a proposed rate increase. According to the agenda presentation, the consequence for not having a rate increase would jeopardize keeping up with technology, increase security and safety risk and more frequent outages, among other things. Any rate increase would have to be approved by the board and council, and the target is for fall of 2021. Now to troubles at the Bear County Jail. Two deputies fired after one of them is now accused of ordering an assault of an inmate. 34-year-old deputy Frank Ramos, the ninth jail worker or deputy arrested this year so far, a total of 11 jail workers or deputies have been arrested. That's in 2020. Now, Sheriff Javier Salazar says audio and video shows Ramos ordering the attack on a 45 year old inmate after allegedly catcalling a female deputy on Monday. Ramos was fired facing charges of official oppression and assault bodily injury. Sheriff Salazar also says he hopes to file federal charges, but it will be up to a federal court to pursue them. Meanwhile, Salazar adds the part time deputy who was catcalled was also fired. The sheriff says Jasmine Ramos fired for failing to stop and failing to report the attack. Ex-Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela made her first in-person appearance since the pandemic made everything go virtual. Our team was there just moments before the hearing when a supporter of Barrientes Vela tripped a KSAT photographer. Oh, that's my son. He tripped. It was one of several apparent attempts to keep us from documenting the hearing. The court decided to push back her abuse of office trial to August. This after the state filed new indictments against Barrientes Vela and her former Precinct 2 captain, Mark Garcia, a move that was described as largely procedural. Well, Northeast ISD confirming two guns found at two different schools this week. The first case happening at MacArthur High School on Thursday. The district says a student was in a hallway alone, seemed to be acting suspicious. An administrator and an officer called the student into a classroom. While speaking with the student, the district says the student was found to be armed with a gun and he was arrested. The district says there was no threat and according to investigators, the student then explained he had the gun for his own protection for, quote, things occurring outside of school, end quote. The second gun found yesterday, Friday, inside a bathroom at Ed White Middle School. The district says a student happened to find the weapon after school was dismissed. 
That student reported the gun to staff. It was secured. The district now reviewing video from outside the restroom, trying to figure out who exactly left the gun behind. In your morning headlines, New York police looking for up to six suspects in a gang attack that is investigated as a hate crime. One person already in custody for the assault on a 29-year-old Jewish man. He told police it happened when supporters of Israel and Palestine were clashing in protests on Thursday. The victim wearing a kippah or a yarmulke walking to a pro-Israel protest. Some members of the gang accused of making anti-Semitic statements. Authorities in Los Angeles also investigating a possible hate crime against Jewish people following an incident outside a restaurant this past week. The Anti-Defamation League saying that there is a dangerous and drastic surge in anti-Jewish hate recently in cities across the world and on social media. And an accused Capitol rider charged with allegedly spraying chemicals on police will have to stay in jail. A judge denied Daniel Caldwell's request for house arrest, saying he's too dangerous. Most alleged Capitol riders charged with using weapons or turning violent are being detained. Caldwell is pleading not guilty. That's even though he's seen on video spraying police and he admitted doing so on the platform parlor. And now to the tech world, kind of in court. Apple CEO Tim Cook taking the stand in the Fortnite antitrust lawsuit. Epic Games, the owner of Fortnite, following the lawsuit last summer after Apple dropping Fortnite from its app store, saying Epic created its own digital payment system. Apple gets a cut of many in-app purchases on the iOS devices and does not allow alternative payment systems. Epic now accusing Apple of exercising monopolistic control over its iOS operating system. Tim Cook arguing that he hasn't abused Apple's market power, that there are several other places users can buy the apps. Time now is 8.09, 73 degrees home. Roasted, chocolate covered, or even in the form of mini tacos. Still mm. ahead, we're catching up with a couple of Tennessee professors who have created cicada recipes mm. now that they're emerging from the ground after 17 years. Yeah, I'm, I'm hard pass. And <laughs> helping you find the perfect post-COVID vacation destination after the break, we're gonna tell you about a new KSAC quiz and we're gonna share our results. We gotta take it first. Yeah, <laughs> a live look right now. Well, uh, you can't see uh, much, but we'll be back with more information and your forecast. Good morning and welcome back. So we all know the pandemic has not been great for so many people, and you're probably now more ready than ever. You're a little frustrated over <laughs> yeah. there. We So I'm just going to skip right to the punchline. Okay. There's a quiz you can take yes. to see what your next dream vacation is. We just took some of the quizzes. Go for it. My result was Las Vegas, Ooh. which I've never been, and I honestly have no desire to actually go and roll it. <laughs> but it says you've been cooped up at home and you mm. are ready to party. Before the pandemic, you were the life of the party and you were ready to be back in the spotlight. That's not true. Were you the life of the party? Uh, no. What? I don't really go out much. All right, so <laughs> either way, we have this quiz right now on KSAT.com. Take some weight off the shoulders, helping you figure out your perfect getaway. Mine said Miami. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. <gasps> Miami is so Max. fun. There you go. I just I came back Miami. from Miami, Ooh. and it was a great vacation. I feel like you would fit into the yeah. Miami scene very well. Mm. You would. Max. You're outdoorsy. Sun's sure. out, guns out, man. That's yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a look outside right now. We are seeing some raindrops there on this live cam view. Uh, but one thing I really notice is the haziness on the horizon. Some areas are dealing with drizzle and even a little fog this morning around San Antonio. Light rain being reported at the airport, 72 degrees, a north wind at 10 miles per hour. It's uh, warm for a start of a May day. 70 in Bernie Sage Airfield, 71 in Bulverde, 72 in New Braunfels, 72 in Seguin, and 75 in Divine. Visibility is down to two miles in San Antonio, down to two at Stinson, and down to five at JBSA Randolph. This is because of some mist moving in uh, from the east. You can actually see that light mist there on our radar, generally along and east of 281. But let's take a closer look out to the east. Now, near Seguin, you can see very clearly a uh 
a counterclockwise swirl of a low pressure system near Seguin with some heavier rain approaching uh, I-35 in Comal County. Now this is just some moderate rainfall. Elsewhere in Gonzales, Hallettsville, we've got some moderate rain. We've only had a few flashes of lightning with the rain that's occurring. The rain that's occurring is very tropical in nature, meaning that it, it's probably not going to be severe. We're not going to have to worry about severe weather today. Lightning is even going to be few and far between, but when it does rain, it has the potential to produce some very heavy rainfall, very big raindrops, uh, which are probably occurring uh, just to the east of New Braunfels now and to the west of Gonzales. Now, as this low moves north and moves west, we're going to be on the back side of it here in San Antonio uh, by about midday. And that's when we have our best chance for those heavy tropical downpours. Yes, it's drizzly and misty outside right now, but right at around the midday hours, so 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., that's our best chance to see some heavier rainfall uh, at times. Now, not everybody is going to see the heavy rainfall and in fact in the afternoon we'll really only have isolated showers and potentially an isolated storm and so you should still be able to enjoy some of your Saturday outdoors just have that case weather app handy because you can look at the radar and uh, bring your umbrellas if you can out to the west though Del Rio Eagle Pass Sea Valley you don't have a good chance for rain today unfortunately temperatures out there will be quite warm 92 in Del Rio near 90 in Carrizo Springs and Eagle Pass but where we're going to have the chance for rain today, our high temperatures will be in the low 80s. In fact, here's a look at your Saturday's forecast. 60% chance for scattered showers and even a few rumbles of thunder, 10 to noon to even early afternoon, and then becoming more isolated in the later afternoon and evening hours. East winds today at 10 to 15 and a high temperature of only 80 degrees. Now, there's that clear low pressure system right there. We're going to see an upper level trough approach from the west, bringing in Pacific moisture so these two systems are going to sandwich each other and continue to bring us the chance for rain tomorrow. A 60 percent chance for scattered downpours throughout the day tomorrow, especially during the midday. And then again on Monday, we're going to have the chance for scattered downpours. When all is said and done through Monday or through the start of Tuesday, there will be some areas that see up to an inch of rain, up to two inches well to the east of San Antonio. But it is possible to get more soaking rains. We'll be watching for the potential for some flooding issues, but really that would be the only big issue that we would be having from these showers and storms today, tomorrow and Monday. Again, severe weather is not really a major concern for us. We'll continue to keep you updated, but look at that rain chances come to a gradual end by Tuesday and in the weekend into the rest of the week. We're going to be just pretty warm and muggy as we close out May. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 818, 73 degrees out. And a second grader hoping to bring some happiness to the streets just oh. ahead. A look at how she designed a police department's newest ride <laughs> and the messages she hopes to spread with it. Fantastic. It looked like slime from like yeah. Nickelodeon back in the day. Oh, those good old days. <laughs> I wouldn't be slimed. All right. It's Saturday. That means that we have Texas Eats, a San Antonio snack shop. Get this, serving up wild hot Cheeto creations. We're gonna explain next. That looks good. It's not just the sweets out here that's reason to come out here. It's also the savory items as well. And check this one out. This one. This is hot Cheetos, but it's also, you have the corn inside of there yes. as well. This you have is, some crema. This is hot cheese preparados. So uh, what we do is we do the hot Cheetos and then we add the nacho cheese and then we layer on the crema, the mayonnaise, every, anything that you would normally go <laughs> into an elote. Right. Uh, it would be, oh, I just want to get it is in here. And then if you got a lime, just you got to use it, it right. There we go, get a little bit of that action going on. One of the things that sets this place apart from other snack shops is the fact that they're using white corn. A lot of places are using yellow corn, but if you want to be authentic, it's got to be white. I'm in. Sold. I love hot Cheetos <laughs> and I love corn. Oh my gosh. Can we get some? There we go. I know. I, I have you that know. for breakfast. Breakfast of champions. Yeah. Time now, 822, 72 degrees out. A second grader shares a brightly colored message with the help of her local police department. Hmm. Coming up next, what she hopes her words will spread to those in her community. 
All right, time to take a look at birthdays this morning. First up, we have Patty. 62. Happy birthday, Patty. Happy birthday. And this is Angelic. She is 51 and fabulous. Feliz <laughs> cumpleaños. Keep posting those birthday pictures on ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name. And if you're brave, your age. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Good morning. Welcome back and happy weekend. Take a look at this. A Pennsylvania second grader hoping to bring some happiness and cheer to the streets, helping design a police department's newest ride. Students at Yorkshire Elementary School got a sneak peek of the Springettsbury Township police car this week. McGovern's design was chosen from five finalists. Her message for the brightly colored police vehicle, <laughs> the world needs love. The officers from the department say the timing of the message is perfect. Springettsbury Township Police hope to make this an annual contest. I Very love cool. it. Well done. Slime. There you go, <laughs> slime colored. All right, 827, 72 degrees out. Getting into the Fiesta spirit still ahead in the next half hour, we're hearing about the annual traditions and what they mean for San Antonians in this week's Breakdown Booth. And speaking of Fiesta, a Fiesta themed drive through clinic, drive through vaccine clinic and free medals for getting that vaccine. Details on when you can roll up the sleeve today and tomorrow, that's next. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 8.30 this morning, May 22nd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We got Alicia Brera here, it's a good day. It is a good day, thank you, Max. And for those who haven't stepped out yet, probably a good thing because it's a little muggy out there. Sarah, yes. is it gonna stay like that all day? Well, for the first part of the day here, we are gonna continue to see this drizzle and light rain that's ongoing around San Antonio. Right around the midday hours, though, we will have a few downpours into the afternoon, a little bit more isolated. So if you're looking to spend some time outdoors today, I think the later afternoon is your best bet. Here we've got the radar. Can you see that characteristic counterclockwise swirl right over Comal County, Guadalupe County? This is actually a low pressure system that originated in the Gulf of Mexico, and there is the center of low right now. You can see on the right hand side of this uh, system, there's some heavier rain in Gonzalez County, in Lavaca County near Hallettsville, but here in San Antonio, we're just seeing some areas of light rain. New Braunfels and Marion area getting a little bit more moderate rainfall, but the light rain is occurring right now over San Antonio and even some mist and some drizzle too. And that's what's allowing visibility to be a lot lower locally. Uh, visibility down to two miles at the airport, down to three at JBSA Randolph and down to two and a half at Stinson. So it is damp out there. And for this weekend, we're going to have a 60% chance for scattered downpours both today and tomorrow. Now coming up in the forecast, I'll tell you when our best chance to see downpours here uh, today is. And of course, we'll talk about tomorrow's rain chance as well. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man in the hospital after San Antonio police tell us he crashed on the highway overnight, ending in a partial shutdown of the roadway. Officers on the scene telling us the driver of the truck was speeding westbound on 410 near Ingram. All this happening around 215. That's when we're told he rear ended another vehicle. Officers say the driver of that truck lost control, rolled over several times before finally coming to a stop at the grassy median. He was taken to University Hospital. He is expected to be OK and the investigation is ongoing, but police say the driver now being evaluated for a DWI. Also new this morning, a family just south of downtown working to figure out what comes next after a fire at their home just after 3 a.m. This was a situation earlier in the 300 block of Belden Avenue. Firefighters on the scene tell us the flame started in the back of the home just outside of the bedroom. The fire actually made its way inside the room, but fortunately the fire was quickly put out. The home sustained heavy smoke damage. We're told the homeowner was using a generator to get power to the home. Now Red Cross has been called out to the scene to help the family there. The fire department is still investigating a cause. Nearly 100 jobs being eliminated at Family Tapestry, the division of the Children's Shelter, following allegations of abuse and neglect earlier this year. Now in the hands of the state, the Children's Shelter confirmed it will lay off 93 full-time employees. They're scheduled to have their last day of employment on July 13th. The Children's Shelter says they notified the employees last Friday, and they do have a severance plan in place. 
And sinking small businesses in need of financial direction is a common trend post-COVID. That's why organizers with Lift Fund are urging entrepreneurs to reach out for help now before they can't qualify for loans because of bad credit. If you have a small business and want to find out more information on loans and legal questions, contact launchsa.org or Lift Fund. We have their information on ksat.com. And the U.S. Small Business Administration is also reminding small eating establishments of an upcoming deadline. Restaurant revitalization fund applications are being accepted until Monday at 7 p.m. You can access that online portal at sba.gov. All right, local elections still far from over and early voting for the runoff elections here in San Antonio starts this coming Monday. There are several votes taking place. Voters heading back to the polls deciding city council races in District 1, 2, 3, 5 and 9. Election Day is on Saturday, June 5th, and right now on KSAT.com, we have everything you need to know about the candidates and the races themselves. Just click on the menu tab on our homepage and look for the vote 2021 section. All right, City of San Antonio and WellMed hosting a Fiesta-themed COVID vaccination drive today on the south side. So the Johnson & Johnson shot will be offered while supplies last. It starts at 9 a.m. and like we said, until supplies last or until noon, it's going to be in the parking lot of the Plaza Building, 2600 block of Southwest Military Drive. That's near Sartsa's Mora. Uh, the drive through clinic will include giveaways like Fiesta medals. Locals who haven't received their COVID vaccine and who are at least 18 years old are encouraged to attend. But remember, if you do have plans, a valid photo ID such as a driver's license, state ID or passport is required. And Metro Health is inviting everyone out to get a COVID-19 vaccine tomorrow and Monday. If you show up, you may receive one of the new KSAT Fiesta medals. They're on a first come, first serve basis for the first 500 people vaccinated at each event. There will be a KSAT 12 medal, SA Live medal, Adam Kasky thermometer, Thursday medal, Texas Eats medal, and weather authority. You can find location and time information for both events right now on KSAT.com. And speaking of Fiesta medals, this week's episode of KSAT explains all about the history behind one of our favorite Fiesta traditions. From the medals to the royalty and, of course, the food, there's a lot to talk about. That's right. Myra Arthur stepping into the breakdown booth, explaining what you can expect from the new episode. Fiesta is back. It's happening in 2021. Show of hands. Who's excited? Lexi, RJ, Val. All, all hands are shown here. A lot of times we take on some big, complicated topics when it comes to KSAT Explains, but this week it's all about having some fun and it's all about making a difference in San Antonio because that's what Fiesta is all about, the party with a purpose. So in this episode, we're taking a look at the why behind some of the most well-known and beloved Fiesta traditions, the parades, the kings, the queens, the medals, Niosa, Neosa. We're taking a look at that debate as well and explaining where it came from, how it's evolved over the years, and how this citywide celebration has become all-inclusive, something for everyone in just about every side of town. So as you're getting geared up to celebrate Fiesta, which we all have to admit is largely symbolic for the city as much as it is a literal party, it does mean that we are finally at a point in our fight against COVID-19, where things can start to feel normal again. We've been craving that. And the chicken on a stick. We've been craving chicken on a stick. So take a look at this Fiesta episode to find out all you need to know about what to expect this year, how things will be a little bit different because of COVID, but also how this party got started in the first place. Go to ksat.com slash explains or download the KSAT TV app and check it out on demand. Love it. That's so exciting. Yeah. I'm excited for Niosa and then the Belgian waffles. Yeah. So Niosa, not Niosa? Yeah, I say Niosa. <laughs> you? Niosa. Niosa. <laughs> Time right now is 838, 72 degrees. Well, pushing for healthy initiatives on the city south side just ahead. Big changes one local councilwoman hoping to make and what inspired her to do just that. And two Tennessee professors are making the best out of a rare and gross situation. Mm. After the break, a look at cicada recipes they are serving up. Yeah. <laughs>
Interesting. All right, we're well back here at home. 72 degrees. Can't see too much out there. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. All right. Good morning and welcome back. If you're on the East Coast, you're seeing and you're hearing the cicadas right now, and it's it's not pretty. It's not pretty, but two men in Tennessee have come up with recipes so you can eat them. Oh my gosh, Sam Luther with WVLT met them in the kitchen to see what's on the menu. We took to the kitchen at the University of Tennessee with Professor Jerome Grant and David Bechtel. First up, Cicada Street Tacos. All right, I'm gonna throw in the cicadas with cilantro, peppers, onion, and some lime. That's good grub. David keeps the wings on his cicadas and hard boils them. As far as the taste? I think of it as kind of a shrimp taste. If street tacos aren't your style, who doesn't love chocolate? We have dark chocolate and we have white chocolate, and we're gonna make both with chocolate-covered insects. Jerome roasted his cicadas, and after they're laid out on wax paper, you melt the chocolate. Then you get your final product. But if you want something a little more complex, you can add cicadas in your stir fry. The process is simple. Just make your favorite version of stir fry, but then add cicadas at the end. When you eat it, you'll think, oh, this is delicious. But if I tell you there's a cicada in it, you may not feel the same way. Jerome says over 2 million people regularly eat bugs worldwide and that these cicadas can actually taste good. Hmm. I believe it, you know, because I've, I've eaten crickets before. I was going to say, during it, first Cricket and flour, you make, there's tortillas that are made out of cricket flour. It's yeah. seriously good. I'm not kidding. Feel free to bring in extras. Okay, I will. But first, I'm going to talk about the weather. Is that yeah, all right with you guys? Great. Okay, uh, showing you the uh, Bear County area right now, and you can see that light rain is really starting to, to move in. It's, it's pretty misty and drizzly out there right now. If I go ahead and put a pause on it, and we'll zoom in to the areas that are seeing some more moderate bands of rain, and that does include New Braunfels down to Santa Clara uh, and up into parts of Guadalupe County here just to the east of the lake. Uh, pardon me, in Comal County, just to the east of Canyon Lake. But in Guadalupe County, we're seeing some more moderate rain along a 10 there between about that friendly corner area all the way up to Seguin and on the eastern side of Guadalupe County. Also seeing some light rain showers in Wilson and Atascosa County. When I push play here, you can see the counterclockwise swirl of this low pressure system that originated in the Gulf of Mexico. So it's very tropical in nature. Hallettsville, moderate rain pretty much all morning long. It's been uh, raining there and in Guadalupe County. This low pressure system is going to push northwest today. And as it does so, uh, and we interact with some daytime heating, we're going to have a chance for a few more downpours here in San Antonio, mainly through the early afternoon hours. This is a look at the high res future cast right at about lunch. 60% chance for scattered downpours. Now, with these tropical systems, we do not have to worry about uh, severe weather, especially because we're on the west side of this tropical system. Instead, there could be a couple of flashes of lightning, but there's not going to be any hail to worry about and gusty winds to worry about. Just some potentially heavy rain at times if you get a good healthy downpour. Outside right now, it's just misting and drizzling. As we head into the later afternoon hours, that coverage is going to become more isolated. But it's still going to be pretty cloudy, mostly cloudy, cloudy skies throughout the day today and high temperature only near 80 degrees. So again, 40 to 60 percent chance for scattered downpours through the early afternoon, becoming more isolated in the later afternoon. East winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so a little breezy at times. Outside right now, gray skies and the airport is reporting some light rain, 72 degrees. North winds at 12 miles per hour. Visibility is a lot less in New Braunfels less than two miles in Gonzales as well. This is the areas that are seeing either mist or light rain and even some potential fog in some spots. Temperatures are on the mild side in the low 70s. And as we zoom out a little bit more, you can see that characteristic low pressure counterclockwise swirl there of that low pressure system moving in from the Gulf. Meanwhile, to our west, we've got an upper level low. This is bringing in even more moisture from the Pacific Ocean. And these are gonna sandwich each other and keep rain chances in the forecast tomorrow. This is early tomorrow morning, should be fairly quiet, but by about noon again, we'll have scattered downpours 
tropical in nature, uh, heavy raindrops, a few flashes of lightning, and then once again on Monday we'll have a very similar situation. So rain chances 60% today, 60 Sunday, 40% on Tuesday, and they start to uh, Monday rather, and they start to taper off after Tuesday. By Friday it'll just be plain old warm and humid outside. So let's enjoy the cooler temperatures, even though they do come with the rain. By the way. If you want to get outside today, I think your best bet is the later afternoon again when our chances for rain are only isolated at best. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 847, 72 degrees out. From improving walking trails to opening new dog parks, one San Antonio councilwoman is pushing for healthy initiatives in her Southside district. Up next, we're hearing from Rebecca Villagran about the goals she's accomplished so far. Welcome back. A 2017 to 2018 report from Metro Health showed people living in the south side of town are hospitalized for diabetes at a much higher rate than those in the north side. That's right. So for that reason, Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran has pushed for healthy initiatives in her south side district from improving walking trails to even opening up a new dog park. Sarah Acosta spoke with the councilwoman about the goals she's accomplished to improve her residents health in her eight years on city council. Also, the pandemic has taught us is we do have to um, refocus and reinvest in our public health. One of Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran's most important initiatives for District 3 has been the health of Southside residents. When people are healthy um, physically, the whole economy and the whole city is also healthy. When Villagran took office in 2013, she knew she needed to help the Southside lower the obesity and diabetes rate. One study showed that Southside residents were hospitalized at a much higher rate for diabetes than other parts of San Antonio, which is why many of Villagran's capital project investments have been centered around improving outdoor spaces in the district, with the goal of providing safe spaces for residents to get active in their neighborhoods. It's about this. It's also in investing in all of our creekways and our hike and bike trails in the city. We've invested more dollars in that, um, and it's an over 15 more miles, new additional miles since I've been in office to our hike and bike trail. So it's been pretty incredible. One of Villagran's most cherished accomplishments includes these two dog parks here at Kingsboro Park. There are now three dog parks in the district. Villagran says when she started on council in 2013, her district didn't have any dog parks until she helped open the first dog park in the district that year in South Lions Park. She also pushed for Viva San Antonio Healthy Corner Stores, a project that helps provide affordable produce in eight Southside <laughs> convenience stores in neighborhoods that don't have grocery stores nearby. The need for safer and healthier options were things her residents said they wanted. She hopes that trend of investing in the community's health can continue when she leaves office in June. They see um, things coming forward and they're staying engaged. And I think that's what I'm most proud of, that they see the power in their voice. All right, time right now, 8.53, 72 degrees. All right, go Spurs, go. The season did not end the way we wanted, but don't worry. It looks like there's a bright future for the Spurs. We're going to explain and an overtime barn burner from last night. All well, the highlights right after the break. Well, good morning, welcome back. And I got to say, before I say anything else, go Spurs, go. Now, sad note, San Antonio Spurs officially in the offseason mode. They're recovering from failing to make the playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons. First time in franchise history. So that actually happened when they lost the play-in tournament against the Grizz, Memphis, Wednesday. They fell 196, but big credit because they were down a lot early. They fought back. Now as the Spurs discuss the future of free agents, some big names that we need to know about. DeMar DeRozan, Rudy Gay, Patty Mills. Now the future looks bright with a lot of young guys. We got Lonnie Walker the fourth, Devin Vassell, and Keldon Johnson. He helped provide a spark. There you see him right there during a 72-game season. But after two seasons, Keldon has yet to make the playoffs. Don't worry, we always have next year. So, here we go. From last night, Western Conference play-in game. We had Grizz, we had Warriors, a heck of a game. The Warriors hosting the Grizzlies for the 8th seed in the Western Conference. Grizzlies got off to a 13-point lead. The Warriors, they have Steph Curry, so, you know, he can score 30 points in a minute. Jumper in the lane, a few threes here and there, but in the end... Steph Curry, former MVP, former champion, could not do enough. They did go to overtime, and there you see it. The man of the night, John Morant, 
Well, he won. He and the Grizz, they are officially in the playoffs. Let's roll the final score, 117 to 112. Grizzlies win big. Next stop, Utah Jazz. So there you go. Anything you want to add? There's always next year. Um, I'm right now, right? 52, 72 degrees. All right. Do you want to get your budget back in shape? Still ahead. Some easy ways to start saving money. Keep you on that tight budget. And world's largest iceberg has called from Antarctica. Mm. Will it cause the sea level to rise? Well, we have the details next. While the ceasefire continues to hold up in the Middle East, we have the latest from Gaza. And there have been some confusion regarding COVID-19 protocols at the Bear County Courthouse. It's a courthouse following them after the governor's executive order. We have the details. And we are taking a live look, at least we're trying the lens of live cam. That's supposed to be Southside City Cam. 72 degrees out there. What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday, May 27th. Second, thank you so much for joining us. It feels like May 27th. Yes, feels it it's <laughs> hot and humid. Couldn't see anything out there. You're ready for the yeah, long weekend. It's muggy out there right now, Alicia and Max. And what you were seeing there was the camera that's actually in a cloud right now because the clouds are pretty low. But we are ex experiencing areas of mist and drizzle and light rain around San Antonio. This is the complex of showers that's moving north and west. You can see very closely here a counterclockwise swirl. Now, if you've been paying attention to the weather over the last couple of days, here's that counterclockwise swirl right there. So that center of low pressure is just near New Braunfels. If you've been paying attention to the weather over the last couple days, you know that this was a system that the National Hurricane Center was watching to see if it would develop or get a name. And it didn't get a name, but as it's moving inland, it is bringing some tropical rains, especially for uh, our eastern counties. Some heavier rain out near Lavaca County and Hallettsville. Right now, this is moderate rain near Shiner as well. Uh, but no lightning with this yet. Now, as we get some more daytime heating, we may have a few lightning strikes in Guadalupe County, though, some good moderate rain uh, just to the north and to the east of uh Kingsbury and then out near the Garden Ridge community we're seeing some moderate rain uh, out there as well just to the south and west of New Braunfels and to the uh, east of Canyon Lake. Those are where some of the pockets of the heavier rain is right now. Elsewhere we've got light rain in Floresville and Poth and in Atascosa County. Some light rain in Southern Bear County as well. This is a look at 281 at Hildebrand and you can see that there's quite a bit of road spray on the roads this morning if you have plans to head out early this Saturday. Now looking at the forecast, we're going to carry a 60% chance for uh, some heavier pockets of rain through the early afternoon, becoming more isolated in the later afternoon, a high temperature of only 80 degrees uh, because of the extra clouds and the chance for rain. Now coming up in the forecast, we did just get the pollen count in, so we'll have a look at that. And we'll also take a look at the future cast for today and for the rest of the weekend in just a few minutes. Alicia, Max. Top stories we're following this morning. Two men are in the hospital this morning after a shooting at a gentleman's club on the city's north side. This was a scene around 1 a.m. in the 2700 block of Northwest Loop 410. Police say three men were causing a disturbance inside Sugar's Gentleman's Club. Security kicked them out of the club and then the group got into an argument outside. The three men loaded up into their truck and tried to drive off. The security guard pulled his weapon and fired several shots. Two of the men were shot in the arm. Both victims were taken to University Hospital in stable condition. And right now, police are still trying to figure out what charges, if any, those involved will face. Well, local courthouse orders that require wearing masks and maintaining social distancing will remain in place. An executive order from Governor Greg Abbott says counties can no longer require or demand wearing masks in the courthouse. Now, that executive order went into effect yesterday, but local administrative judge Ron Ron Hell says that the order does not apply to the Bear County Courthouse complex. Ron Hell says the courts rely on guidance from the Texas Supreme Court. He says, quote, if the Texas Supreme Court tells us within the next few days that we no longer have to follow those rules, then I'll update the protocols, end quote. The Texas House and Senate have reached a compromise on a bill to allow the permitless carrying of handguns. The author of the legislation, Representative Matt Schaefer, announced the deal in a statement Friday afternoon. This move 
This moves the bill even closer to Governor Greg Abbott's desk for a signature. Schaefer's House Bill 1927 would eliminate the requirement for Texas residents to obtain a license to carry handguns if they're not barred by state or federal law from possessing a gun. In your morning headlines to the Middle East now where a tense ceasefire held overnight despite some new clashes. ABC's Matt Gutman is on the ground in Gaza City with the latest news and a look at the destruction left behind after the 11 day conflict. This morning, despite clashes on the Temple Mount between Israeli police and Palestinians cheering Hamas, that ceasefire is holding. Thousands of Palestinians gathering for Friday prayers at the site holy to Jews and Muslims. It started with taunts and shouts degraded into the kind of clashes that triggered this 11 day conflict with Israeli police deploying stun grenades and firing rubber bullets. Late Friday, President Biden saying he hopes the ceasefire holds and weighing in on the Jerusalem clashes that ignited the conflict. I also indicated to the Israelis that I thought it was very important that they stop in Jerusalem this intercommunal fighting that is by extremes on both sides. Meanwhile, Gaza creaking back to life. Traffic snarling roads battered by bombs. And Palestinians moving around freely for the first time in nearly two weeks. The Fayad family taking us up to their apartment. They said they were sleeping in this room when the bombs hit, blowing out that wall. We're told that about 50 people lived in this building. And right here, you can see the blood stains from where people tried to escape, bleeding as they went out. Now, where we are here in Beit Hanun is one of the most densely populated places on Earth. And when you come up here to this blown off facade, you can see the extent of the damage here from those missiles. Nearly every home you see destroyed. About 70,000 remain bombed out of their homes, but the quiet allowing Hamas to bury its militants and civilians to mourn the dead. A full week after his wife and four sons were killed in an airstrike, among the 63 Palestinian children killed in the conflict, Mohammed Hadidi opening the customary funeral tent here in Gaza. He thought his whole family was killed, but his five-month-old Omar had survived. On Friday, he held his dozing boy in his arms, kissing his head. <laughs> Muhammad telling me Omar is his whole world. He says he wants his baby son to have a beautiful life without bombings. In Minnesota, Attorney General announcing he will leave the prosecution against the officer who shot and killed Dante Wright. Former Brooklyn Center police officer Kim Potter is charged with second degree manslaughter for the shooting. Potter claims she mistook her gun for a taser. The Hennepin County attorney asked the attorney general's office to leave the case after Washington County returned the case to them. The trial has been set to start on December 6th of this year. All right, well, federal student loan payments, they are set to resume on October 1st. I know this is not good news for a lot of people. This actually follows a 19-month suspension that was put in place to help provide financial relief during the pandemic. Balances have basically been frozen since March of 2020, and interest rates have actually stopped adding up during that time as well. So the pause on the payments and the interest waiver only apply to federally held loans, which cover about 65% of all federal student loans. So the date to know, October 1st. Yeah, time right now, 908, 72 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a San Antonio ISD student who not only started his school's eSports varsity team, but he is also getting a scholarship for eSports. That's still ahead in today's Great Graduate Series. And the world's largest iceberg floating off of Antarctica after breaking this week. What scientists say is the cause after the break. And taking a live look with live Ooh. cam, this looks a lot like my windshield on muggy days like this. I think Sarah said we're in a cloud? Yes, literally. <laughs> we'll be back with more. Well, good morning and welcome back. The world's largest iceberg floating off Antarctica after breaking off from the icy continent. The European Space Agency says it's about 80 times the size of Manhattan. Scientists don't think the break off is due to climate change. They say it's just a normal process called calving. 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 There you go. We learned about it this morning. <laughs> Scientist Sarah. Sarah, the scientist Sarah. We're going to check in with her in a second. Since the iceberg had been floating on the ice shelf, it won't even cause the sea level to rise when it fully melts. 
And a pool on a river. It huh. sounds kind of strange, but after more than 10 years of crowdfunding and testing, it has been given the green light on the project in New York City. That's pretty cool. So designers of Plus Pool want to build a 285,000 gallon public pool on a floating island in the East River. It is shaped like a plus sign to have separate areas for children, sports, swimming laps and lounging. The pool will have layers of filtration to make the water safe for swimming. Designers say it will also clean the surrounding river. Oh. The project is estimated to cost more than $20 million. Sarah Spivey is just shaking her head. Ooh. I mean, I guess you got to make space in New York, right? There you, <laughs> there you go. All right, well, I promised the pollen count before we went to break, and here it is. Uh, molds are moderate today at 560. They're down a little bit from yesterday, but I think with the mugginess that's out there right now, with the drizzle and light rain that's occurring, uh, we're probably going to see that mold number go up over the next 48 hours or so. Grass is present in low amounts. Outside right now, you can see cloudy and light rain is being reported at the airport. 73 degrees north wind at about 10 miles per hour. It's muggy and 70 at Bernie Stage Airfield. 71 in comfort where it's anything but comfortable because of the high humidity. 76 in Hondo, 79 in Divine, 74 at Stinson, 72 at JBSA Randolph. We're also seeing visibility limited down to two and a half miles at the airport down to a mile and a half in Pleasanton and down to three in New Braunfels. This is a mix of mist and light rain that's ongoing around this area of low pressure. There's the center of low just to the uh, through New Braunfels and through 35 there. This originated in the Gulf of Mexico uh, and it didn't get a name from the National Hurricane Center and we don't have to worry about gusty winds or anything like that. Mainly a lot of us are just seeing some uh, light rain rain around San Antonio from this with some more moderate rain in pockets like up in uh, parts of Guadalupe, Comal County is just past the Bear County line there north of Garden Ridge. Some moderate rain there, some light to moderate rain near uh, Marion, Santa Clara, and just to the north of uh, Seguin near Geronimo seeing some moderate rain there as well. Let's go up into Comal County where you can see just to the west of Canyon Lake down to Startsville, Canyon Lake Forest, and Smithson Valley, some moderate rain there as well. Now, as I mentioned, this is moving to the north and to the west, so some of this light to moderate rain is actually going to skirt uh, areas like Bernie and Kendall County, but really the big winners as far as rain goes right now is in a line from Austin all the way down to Hallettsville and down to Victoria. This is where that band of moderate rain has set up, and they're getting some good healthy rains some light rain in Atascosa County. But here's the thing, as we see a little bit of daytime heating here with the daytime hours, I do think that through lunch we could still have a couple of downpours. Now it's not going to be everybody seeing some moderate rain. In fact, most of this will stay light through about the lunch, but even into the afternoon, one or two isolated showers or storms are possible. But the good news is we're not concerned about severe weather with these kinds of tropical rains. Usually if you do get a heavy heavier shower or even storm. It would just come with one or two lightning strikes and some heavy rain at times. It is not going to rain, however, for our friends out in Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Laredo. Those areas are going to stay dry and toasty in the 90s. Here in San Antonio, though, we'll be close to 80 degrees with less of a chance for rain in the later afternoon hours. Uh, meanwhile, as our weather pattern goes, we're actually sandwiched between two rainmakers. This one out to the west is bringing in Pacific moisture, and this is going to squeeze is out all the moisture over us and bring us a chance for rain, scattered showers and storms tomorrow as well. Here's a look at that. This is right at around the midday hours tomorrow and then again on Monday before we see that system kind of head on out of here. Now when all is said and done, there could be pockets of up to an inch of rainfall around San Antonio, up to two inches out east toward Gonzales and up toward Austin. Uh, and uh, again, it's going to be a, a fairly active weather pattern over the next couple of days. Now it will not rain all day today and it will not rain all day tomorrow, but just keep your case at weather authority app handy because you can look at the radar and keep that umbrella handy too. If you have any kind of outdoor plans this weekend. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 916, 72 degrees out. And Lego is releasing a new set that will celebrate diversity. We have the details. And in today's great grad segment, we introduce you to a local student who not only started his team's eSports team, but he's getting a college scholarship for his video gaming skills. We're going to explain next.
Welcome back. 9.20 a.m. this Saturday morning. We know San Antonio is a hotbed for scholarship athletes, and now eSports falls into that category. That's right. This morning we introduce you to Fernando Garcia, a Cast Tech student who not only started his school's eSports team, but is now the first eSports scholarship athlete for the Texas A&M system. This is a varsity letterman jacket, and this means the world to me. Uh, I ended up creating the eSports program here. Like so many people, Fernando Garcia grew up playing video games. It was just a casual hobby with some of his friends. When I first started playing uh, in eSports, I didn't believe that it was a sport, especially coming in from an athletic background, yeah. doing yeah. Olympic style taekwondo, football, basketball, the whole uh, deal. But after playing in a grand final series of over five hours, playing all the maps possible for a best of five series, it was grueling. Fernando then started his mission of starting his school's own team. When I first started creating the program here, back when I was a freshman, I received a bunch of no's. A lot of teachers didn't really believe in the idea of esports and people wasting time playing video games, especially during classes. And like sports teams across the country, you need the right talent to win. I've recruited multiple players to come here to the high school and to get on multiple different teams, especially for Rainbow Six. I've had people come in from John Jay, from Burbank, and multiple other schools throughout San Antonio. As J Sport falls and as in well. some cases, eSports, video games, are an incentive for students to get their work done, pass classes, and ultimately graduate. I've actually convinced some students that never had the idea of going to college afterwards, and they're attending the same university that, as, that I'm going to. So to see them not caring about school, to going to be playing for an eSports team at the university level, it's crazy. If I miss that hard. There are people who think this not, is ridiculous. Would, Video games bad. as a sport? Uh, you need to go on the left side yes. Of the table. It's competitive. It's growing around the world. You can play it anywhere, anytime against anyone. And the fact that video games is growing to that level to have millions of dollars to end up franchising is crazy. Now universities are popping up here and there to have esport programs themselves, offering scholarships and same thing at the high school level. And it's crazy to see how many teams, there's thousands upon thousands of high schools competing in the high school esports league and multiple other leagues across the nation. And get this, Fernando told me he wants to coach either at the university level or the high school level where you can make an impact on students' lives. He says he was already too old to be a pro <laughs> gamer, then we're dinosaurs in that case. I know. <laughs> Time now, 922, 72 degrees out. And not all heroes wear capes. Hmm. Some are four-legged. Oh. How some goats in Nevada are helping fight fires. Oh. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. Big news at a Lego World. Yeah, you heard that right, Lego World. Every, you forgot to say it, though. Everyone is also... Oh, I don't know. Okay, he's um, never watched it. The toy maker is releasing its first ever LGBTQ theme set named Everyone is Awesome. Now I get it. Yeah. There you go. Sorry, well, old. <laughs> the set there contains 346 pieces, including 11 figures, oh. each with an assigned rainbow color. All right. Lego says the model was inspired by the classic rainbow flag to symbolize solidarity with the community. The new set... It's set to go on sale. See that? The new set set to go on yeah. sale in June to mark Pride Month. Very cool. And there's a really important key to fire prevention that you may not have been aware of, and that's goats. Right. We got super goats on our hands. Four-legged hoofed heroes can help fight fires by cutting down on the fuel of the fires in the form of brush. Hundreds of Spanish goats, they are being used in Reno to gobble up the dry vegetation across a 30-acre area near where the Pine Haven fire burned in November of 2020. The goats will be there for the next month. The co-owner of the company supplying the animals says they were genetically designed oh. for brush control. What that means basically is that they are not at all picky. <laughs> They'll eat pretty much any vegetation. Hopefully just the dangerous vegetation. Yeah. You want to keep the good stuff. Goats have a mind of their own anyway. Uh, super goats. 927, 72 degrees out. And do you prefer sweet or salty? Ooh. Still ahead in our next half hour, what your preference in snacks, Max, you're a big snacker, says about your personality. What was on top of that donut? Mm -hmm. All right, President Joe Biden responding to the ceasefire in the Middle East. We're going to tell you the latest statements from the White House. That Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 9.30 this morning, May 22nd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And throughout the morning, we've seen cameras and clouds. Yeah. Heat and humidity already. Oh, yeah, you can feel it. 
and hopefully it's not going to be that like that for too long. Sarah Spivey, what's in store for us today? Well, Alicia, for some folks who are watching us right now, KSAP viewers, generally from New Braunfels out to Gonzales, out to San Marcos, and even up toward Austin, these areas are going to have rain for a good portion of the day. But here in San Antonio, we've really only got some light rain at the moment in the area. Um, but notice how this whole system kind of has a counterclockwise swirl. There's the center of low pressure right now, close to New Braunfels. Now, this was over the Gulf of Mexico, but the National Hurricane Center decided not to give it a name. Uh, and instead, what we're seeing on the east side of this storm system is the healthier rainfall. Also, right near the center of low, uh, we're seeing some moderate rain from New Braunfels to San Marcos out to Canyon Lake. You can see how it's moving generally from east to west. Bulverde and 281 area, Timberwood Park, you're about to get a good uh, splash and dash shower of moderate rainfall. But again, the streaming uh, showers that have occurred from Hallettsville all the way up to Austin, these are more moderate in nature. Rain has been steady in Hallettsville and in Lavaca County pretty much all morning long. And then down to the south, we've got some light rain in Pleasanton and Atascosa County and near Carnes County as well. Here in San Antonio, as I mentioned, the rain really at the time is just light. But as we see the system move to the north and to the west and we get a little bit more daytime heating, we are going to continue to carry a chance for scattered showers and storms uh, through the early afternoon with it becoming more isolated in the afternoon hours later afternoon hours. Visibility down to two and a half miles at the airport, down to two in New Braunfels, down to less than two at Stenson. And so for this weekend, here's your weather headlines. Today and tomorrow, we're going to deal with scattered downpours. Now that means that it's not going to rain everywhere all the time, but when it does rain, uh, they will be tropical in nature in some spots with big drops. But the good news is no severe weather for us this weekend in the forecast. So coming up, I'll show you the future cast and what you can expect um, pretty much hour to hour throughout this weekend. Alicia. Thank you, Sarah. And top stories we're following this morning, a family working to figure out what happened and what comes next after a fire at their home just south of downtown. It happened in the 300 block of Belden Avenue just after 3 a.m. Firefighters say the flames started in the back of the home. The fire then made its way inside the room but was quickly put out. The home sustained heavy smoke damage. We're told the owner was using a generator to get power to the home. The Red Cross was called to the scene to help out the family. And there, the family, the fire department, excuse me, is still investigating. And speaking of investigations, arson investigators still working to figure out what exactly sparked a fire at a home on the city's west side. Take a look. Fire crews say the flames started in the front of a home in the 300 block of Via Rosa around 2.40 this morning. Those flames spreading to the living room. Firefighters able to put it out quickly. At the same time, though, police responded to the same situation. A disturbance between family members right in the front of the house. Police arresting one of those family members. Now charges are still pending. As for the home and the damages, heavy smoke damage. Happening today, the family of baby James Chitis will be hosting a service in honor of the child this morning. The family says the service is happening from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. at the Castle Ridge Mortuary. That's 8008 West Military Drive. Well, at the White House, President Joe Biden telling reporters that he is committed to helping Gaza rebuild and that he hopes for a long-term two-state solution. And there is new conversations regarding a more than trillion dollar infrastructure bill. ABC's White House correspondent Mary Mary Alice has the story. President Biden holding firm Friday downplaying public disagreements with progressives in his party over the United States support of the Israeli government. Do you recognize that there's been a shift and an evolution in your party, Mr. President, in the last 20 years on this issue? There is no shift in my commitment to the security of Israel. But I tell you what, there is a shift in it. We still need a two-state solution. This week, the president facing pressure from members of his own party to do more to help Palestinians. Senator Bernie Sanders introducing a resolution to block the sale of arms and defense equipment to Israel. The White House said it had no plans to change security assistance to Israel. The president sidestepping, saying he was committed to working with other nations to bring aid to civilians in Gaza. They need the help, and I'm committed to get that done. My party still supports Israel. 
until the region says unequivocally they acknowledge the right of Israel to exist as an independent Jewish state, there will be no peace. The fighting abroad consuming much of the week, but the president still moving ahead, too, with negotiations over infrastructure spending. Yesterday, countering Republicans with a second proposal priced around $1.7 trillion, down from $2.2 trillion. The White House had said they hoped to make real progress on this by Memorial Day, but yesterday Republicans on Capitol Hill seemed discouraged by the president's latest offer. West Virginia Senator Shelley Capito, who's been involved in the back and forth, said she worried the two parties were now even further apart, that the president's counteroffer was well above what they had hoped for. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, the White House. Now to local employment numbers. We now have the latest job numbers for April from Workforce Solutions Alamo. The April unemployment rate for the eight county San Antonio New Braunfels metro area stands at, stands at 5.6% better than the 6.5% we saw in March. Remember, Governor Abbott announced Texas is opting out of federal unemployment benefits effective June 26th. And the San Antonio tech community is growing fast, and that means more opportunities for education and more opportunities for jobs. So what has sparked this growth, and what does the future of technology sector across the Alamo City look like? Well, tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Dax Moreno, a local leader in technology in San Antonio, is joining us live. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. And May is Mental Health Awareness Month. That's why KSAT and our KSAT community partner are hosting a mental health town hall next week. The town hall is happening on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Myra Arthur and local experts will be talking about the impact of mental health and wellness from this year. And they will be answering your questions that can be submitted right now on KSAT.com. You can watch the town hall on KSAT.com and, of course, the KSAT streaming app. And time to get ready Fiesta. And speaking of which, you can do so while getting a vaccine. That's right, 900 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be available at a Fiesta-themed vaccine clinic happening right now, 2600 Plaza Building on Southwest Military Drive. It goes until noon, so if you go, you have a chance to get free medals, free Fiesta giveaways while supplies last. Here's the best part, you don't even need an appointment. Very cool, time right now, 938. 73 degrees. Did you know that your preference in snacks says a lot about your personality? <laughs> what was that? That was a little snicker. Yeah. <laughs> See what I did there? Because I just uh, like mm. fat snacks. <laughs> Next on GMSA, we have a preview of today's episode of Texas Eats. David Elder takes us to a cafe serving all you can eat pancakes on there. Challenge accepted. Yes. All right, still in that cloud, 73 degrees out there. Some of you watching are seeing some showers, some are not. We're going to be back with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Syrup for, for kids and anyone that wants a regular syrup. But my favorite is definitely this buttermilk syrup. We've been making this at home for, I think, over 20 years now and we're bringing it here to the store as well. Actually, I don't even know where it started from, but we've been making this for, for years and years. Our kids won't eat pancakes without it. These aren't just regular pancakes either, can you tell? That's a sweet cream and buttermilk pancake. I'm very impressed, man, this is cool. That's just a standard stack that you can order, or how do you order them? So we do for our blueberry and the uh, banana pecan, they come in a four stack like this. Just the sweet cream pancakes by themselves are all you can eat. You can what? sit here all morning long and eat as many pancakes as you can take. All you can eat pancakes. Just leave it like that. <laughs> Sold. I thought he was getting emotional there. <laughs> I saw a tear rolling down his cheek. All that right. That looks so good. So when it comes to snacks coming off pancakes, do you go sweet or do you go savory? I sweet, hands down. All right. Well, it turns out your preference could say a lot about your personality. That's according to a new survey of around 2,000 Americans. The study found sweet tooths tend to eat their snacks in a social setting oh. with friends and family, while savory snackers usually opt for enjoying their treats alone, maybe while watching TV. Okay, yeah. researchers also looked into television preferences with the majority of savory snackers going for documentary TV <laughs> shows. On the flip side, sweet tooths 
Sweet teeth? Sure. A pair to enjoy comedy programs. That's me. Watch Dateline NBC or the ABC program and eat savory snacks. All right. <laughs> okay. I like that. Sweet or salty for you, Max? Oh, it's savory. Oh, man. All right. Big news. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Someone bought a winning <laughs> Mega Millions lottery ticket that's in Pennsylvania worth $515 million. That's $348.6 million for a lump sum payment. That's a few winning chicken dinners. So the winner <laughs> matched the six white ball numbers and the golden mega ball that were drawn last night. The lottery says it is the ninth largest jackpot awarded since the game started way back in 2002. Whoa, the jackpot resets to $20 million for the next drawing on Tuesday. I'll take 20 million. I always feel happy for whoever won, but then I feel bummed that I did not win. Do you play? <laughs> Every now and then. Okay. Every now and then. Huh. So if I don't come into work one day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at the radar right now. You can see very characteristically a low pressure system that originated in the Gulf, that counterclockwise movement. In fact, the center of the low right now is over Comal County. That's where the center of the low is. And this whole system is going to try to push to the north and to the west. And so really on San, in San Antonio, we're on the drier side of the system, but we still have plenty of time to see uh, quite a bit of uh, pockets of rainfall into the early afternoon hours. But uh, the areas that are getting some really good rain right now are east of San Antonio in our eastern viewing area in Gonzales County, the eastern edge of Gonzales. Gonzalez County near Hallettsville and Shiner, seeing some good uh, moderate rainfall there and near Cuero as well. But there still are some areas uh, that are getting some light to moderate rain, like out near Canyon Lake and the Wimberley area. This is going to be a good, healthy rain shower pushing through Wimberley and near the Mystic Shores area near Canyon Lake. We've also got some light rain going on 281 between Bulverde and Spring Branch. Also got some very light rain along I-10 from Bernie to Leon Springs and down to the outer edge of 1604. Closer to downtown San Antonio, some neighborhoods here. We've got Culebra and uh, I-10 seeing some light rain. Also the 410-151 interchange. So if you do have plans to head out this morning, know that those roads are damp. And I'll take you through the future cast here. And you can see that as the system moves northwest, there still is the opportunity to see some heavier downpours through the early afternoon hours for us in San Antonio. By the later afternoon, this will become more isolated, but the chance for rain is still there. So if you're wanting to enjoy some time outdoors and it's a little too damp for you right now outside, just wait, give it a few hours. By the later afternoon hours, you should be able to enjoy some time outdoors. Right now, though, it is cloudy and light rain is being detected at the airport. 73 degrees. Winds are from the north northwest at about 12 miles per hour. We've got low visibility out toward New Braunfels, San Antonio International Airport. These areas are the areas that are experiencing the light rain mist uh, combination from that low pressure system. It's also fairly cloudy around San Antonio, but fairly sunny out toward Del Rio Eagle Pass and Yavali. Those areas have little to no chance for rain today and are going to be quite a bit warmer than us in San Antonio. 73 right now, but it's 78 in Del Rio. Del Rio will be in the 90s today. Here's how our forecast works out in San Antonio. 60% chance for scattered downpours through the early afternoon. Then it becomes isolated. 80 for the high temperature, only 80 degrees because of all the extra cloud cover. And then as that low pressure system moves north, we're going to see it get stuck because of this upper level low, bringing in more Pacific moisture. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means tomorrow we also have a 60% chance for scattered showers and even a few rumbles of thunder. That'll last through about Monday, scattered being the key word there. And again, we're not particularly concerned about severe weather this go around. So no worries there. It just is little puts a little bit of a damper on the weekend forecast figuratively and literally because we have to worry about rain if you want to go outside. All right, Sarah's Fivey, thank you so much. 948, 73 degrees out. And is it time to get your budget back into shape? Well, still ahead, we have some easy ways to start saving money now, even if you're on a tight budget. All right, taking a look at the roadways, wet roadways out there, 281 at Hildebrand. A lot of people out and about, so if you do plan to leave the house, run some errands, go to the farmer's market, make sure to be safe, drive smart. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back and happy weekend. Saving money, never easy, especially when you are on a tight budget.
GMSA producer Rosalyn Jimenez has some easy things on what you can do right now that you can start saving and going down the right path. Most people are having a tough time when it comes to saving money. According to various financial institutions, about 20% of Americans don't have any retirement savings and about 70% have less than $1,000 in a savings account. But the age-old question is, how do you save money when you don't have any to save? Here are several easy things you can do. First, if you haven't already, try changing your TV service. Of course, there's apps like Netflix and Disney Plus that are substantially cheaper than cable, but there are even apps like KSAT TV that are completely free. Don't forget that getting over the air channels is also a free way of getting local TV. According to TheBalance.com, another thing you can do is to stop or severely cut back on eating out. Find ways to spruce up your leftovers. You can also save money by buying frozen or canned fruits, beans, and vegetables. Next, use cash. Many financial experts agree that using cash gives you a real limit on your spending and helps you make better decisions. Actually, having to give your money away will make you think twice about spending it more frivolously. Groceries and entertainment are two categories in which you can try this. The fourth thing you can do is try windling down your credit card debt. The interest on credit cards can be a budget killer. Top money experts say to start with a card with the lowest balance first, and then when that's paid off, use the money you use to spend on that card and put it towards another. Eventually, you will be able to pay things off and put money into savings. Finally, ask for discounts. Whether it's your phone bill, medical bill, or student loans, sometimes if you ask nicely for some help, you may actually get some. It never hurts to try, and the worst thing they can say is no. But if they say yes, put what you saved to good use. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Rosalyn Jimenez. For me, it's coffee. Cutting back on coffee? It's expensive. Oh, yeah. Coffee adds up. Yeah, I do that and try to not eat out often. We have free community coffee. Who? Thrive. You. All right, time now, 954, 73 degrees out. We continue to highlight exceptional students across the Alamo City in our great graduate series. Tomorrow on GMSA, we learn the story of Ana Paula Sarabia, who's thrived to succeed, is now taking her to one of the top research universities in the country. Now let's take a look at birthdays. This Aww. is Gavin. Gavin, happy birthday, the big seven. Happy birthday, Gavin, gotta hit a home run. Next up, Skylar and Tyler, I guess they're oh, twins. twins. How fun. There we go, nine years high. old. My brothers are twins. Happy birthday, guys. Aww. Keep posting those birthday pictures, ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on Good Morning San Antonio. All right, Lotto's our favorite. Pick Ooh. three, the numbers are five, three, nine, Powerball three. Daily four, we have five, two, four, three, Powerball eight. And cash five, seven, eight, 18, 32, 33. Mega million, six, nine, 17, 18, 48. Big number eight, Mega Player three. Someone in Pennsylvania won $550 million. Oh my gosh, maybe today or tomorrow it could be you. Man. There you go. I think it resets to 20, but good luck. We'll be back. In the news you need to know before you go, two men in the hospital this morning after a confrontation inside a gentleman's club locally escalates to gunshots. Let's take a look. This was the scene around 1 a.m. 2700 block of Northwest Loop 410. Police tell us three men causing a disturbance inside Sugar's Gentleman's Club. Security kicked them out of the club. Then the group got into an argument. The three men loaded up into a truck. They tried to drive off. The security guard pulled out a weapon, fired several shots. Two of those men who tried to drive away shot in the arm. Both victims taken to University Hospital in stable condition. Right now, investigation is undergoing and charges are still pending. Last check of the pollen count. Molds are elevated moderate at 560, but they'll probably go up just because it's damp in many spots around south central Texas. We've got this tropical low pressure system moving through, uh, and that's going to keep rain chances in the forecast, especially through the uh, middle of the afternoon here. Some redevelopment on the south of this as it's moving off to the north and to the west. Scattered downpours are also possible tomorrow, so a bit of a damp weekend, although here and there you will be able to see some breaks from the rain. And in fact, it's really only 
Uh, we're really only experiencing light rain around San Antonio at the moment. Then looking ahead to the week, scattered showers and storms are possible Monday and Tuesday before we saw, see things dry out by the end of the week. Not too hot over the next seven days, but it's definitely humid and <laughs> muggy out there today, guys. Oh, so we'll yeah. be keeping track of the weather, the KSAT right. Weather Authority app. The radar is on there too. All right, there's Bobby. Thank you so much, Lisa Burr. Great thank to you so see much. You, Lisa. Thank you guys. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Happy Have Saturday. a Saturday. Great day.